Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting a really nice uh, seascape for you. I'll be showing you step by step how to paint this cypress tree by the beach. Um, some seascape in the background there. And um, it'll be fairly simple palette, pretty easy. I think uh, definitely beginner level tree for sure. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple. So um, let's get started. All right, so this is my example. I've got my husband Mark here with me tonight. Hey there, everybody. He is going to be manning chat for me and taking yes, I am. questions during the live show. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully I'll do a good job. The man behind the, the curtain there. Yes. <laughs> <Thank God>. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing all the buttons, got little dials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yep. <laughs> so um, I... This is my example painting. Uh, I did it on my Strathmore Mixed Media. Um, well, actually, this one was my Canson uh, XL Mixed Media board, but I also use Strathmore uh, Mixed Media paper to do my example paintings on. And so if you want to uh, check that out, the link is down in the description. I get questions all the time about these papers that I do my example paintings on. So that's down in the description. And you can pop that picture up there if you want, huh? Um, these are our palette tonight is unbleached titanium, titanium white, yellow oxide, raw sienna, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta, thalo blue green shade, thalo green yellow shade, and carbon black. Um, pretty simple. And if you don't have one of these colors, you can substitute for, you know, yellow or a brownish yellow or I don't know. Um, just anything in that kind of brown brown yellow sepia toned category will work so yellow ochre would work instead of yellow oxide and you could even you could probably use um, like cerulean blue if you don't have phthalo blue something with a uh, blue with a little bit of a green tint will work best for this so I'm gonna do this guy first and it'll be phthalo blue with a little bit of burnt sienna and these two colors together make a nice uh, teal green. I'm not sure why. It's kind of a magic of paint. It just works that way. So it makes this really beautiful, like soft blue color. I'm going to use that with a little bit extra white in my brush, and I'm just going to brush it on up here in the sky. I've got a 9 by 12 inch uh, gesso board, MDF board. You can use a canvas canvas panel of any size. This could be uh, upscaled pretty easily. So, And um, I actually got a question about that this week in my group. You know, how, how do you go to a larger canvas um, with some of these paintings? You know, how, how would you approach it? And basically, um, you do it the same way, but you need to use larger brushes. So if you um, are doing a much larger canvas, I would use a, a brush twice as big or um, sometimes even bigger than that. So um, that's the main difference. All right, so now as I get down towards the horizon line, which is about, it's just below the halfway mark on this painting, I'm going to grab some yellow oxide and white and make a... It's going to turn kind of greenish. That's okay. The... The photograph that I used uh, came from Pixabay. It was a royalty-free photo, um, and it's got kind of a. I think it probably had a sepia fil filter on it or something, because it's out. It's all got that kind of yellow, uh, yellow tones to the whole thing. So we're gonna kind of try to recreate that sort of antiqued um, 50s, 1950s sort of style. Uh, camera filter feel. So this picture isn't British? <laughs> Why would you say that? Well, you said it was royalty free. <laughs> well, Britons have royalty, so that wouldn't be royalty free anyways. 
Is that what you mean? Right. Yeah. So, so this then is, it wouldn't. Yeah, like this isn't thing. a British painting. Got it. Got it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm a little slow tonight. You, you got to keep up. I, <laughs> I can't, can't keep tight. going back and explaining these you things. You can't <laughs> explain your jokes. <laughs> They're not as funny if you have to explain it. Is that what you're saying? I kind of ruined it. Yeah. So there. it's a cue to me. It wasn't very funny. <laughs> I'm going to clean that up. Uh, I need to get a little bit softer down here by the horizon line. So I'm going to wash that brush out and get a little bit more of my unbleached titanium. A little bit of white with it. I'll try to run that over. I may have to just wait for that to dry. I may have just gotten a little bit too dark. Yeah, it's not going to cover. We'll just let that dry and we'll... Put another coat on it when we get down there again. Okay, so let's do the water. The water is going to be mostly green, phthalo green, yellow shade, a little tiny bit of burnt or uh, phthalo blue, and some yellow oxide. That'll make that kind of soft blue green color that's in the water. We'll add some white to it. A little bit more blue. You just kind of adjust it until you get it the kind of shade you want it. It's pretty green in the photograph you see. So, um, all right, I'm going to do it about actually right about where I stopped is about. Right, it's just below the halfway mark. So go all the way across there. That might be a little bit dark. We add a little bit of white to that. Maybe a little bit more blue. There we go. Just running the edge of my brush all the way across, trying to get a straight line. You can also use your ruler if you want to. I might do that because it looks like I got a little bit off there. There we go. Grab some more white, some more of the blue, phthalo blue, add some of that in streaks in that wet paint. Got a little bit more phthalo blue and just tap in. This is all kind of with the wet paint so I'm just trying to kind of Give it some different colors. They'll all sort of blend together while I'm painting these. I don't want them too thick, so I want to press down really hard on this brush to get a good straight line. You can switch to a smaller brush if you need to, if you're getting too big of uh, little waves here. And I'm not really trying to do any individual waves necessarily. I'm just trying to kind of give this water some texture so it looks a little choppy. If that makes sense. All right, I think that's good. There's it kind of goes at an angle here, so it kind of a little bit higher on this side. And wash that out. I'm gonna switch to a little bit smaller brush and grab some yellow oxide and white. There we go. And this is actually going to be down here. The very front of this waterline is very yellow. And it's probably white in the original photograph, but with that filter it made it kind of look yellow. So we're going to do it yellow. I really like the look of this. We did the example painting in my Patreon group on Facebook last month. so. 
And I liked it so well, I thought we'd do it as a full length video for y'all. You notice I said y'all. Yo. <laughs> Usually tease me when I say that. Okay, there we go. Looking pretty good. Doing okay over there? Am I doing good? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's lots of chats going on. Okay. Because of the events of yesterday. Oh, got it. Mark's birthday was yesterday. Oh, man. Happy birthday, honey. <laughs> there were some awesome stickmen. Thank you. In the group. Yeah. <laughs> when people posted stickmen birthday greetings. It was awesome. Well, a good group of people there, yes. for sure. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, I made the mistake of mentioning it in my <laughs> chat. And it didn't take long before Stickman started showing up in the group. <laughs> okay, I got yellow oxide down here, and I'm just going to put in my sand. Yellow oxide. I'm going to grab some white. Some While I appreciate great food, food. Alexa, my taste is better. Stop. What in the world? That's our Alexa. That is so awesome. That was what that scared me. She was so loud too. Oh my gosh. She she was taking over the show. She was just like, I have something to say. Alexa is our oh stop. Stop. I sh I can't say her name. Um <laughs> It's our Amazon uh ecosystem that uh, runs my lights in my studio. Mark set it up so I can turn on, on and off my lights uh, verbally, which is uh, so awesome. I was not a believer at first. I, I was really skeptical, but he won me over, and it's definitely, definitely helped because I have like 20-something lights in here that <laughs> I was having to turn on and off manually. So, okay, I'm using these. I'm be Well, before I got really interrupted there, <laughs> Using unbleached titanium yellow oxide and burnt se or raw sienna here, and just kind of adding streaks of it in my sand here area. This area down here is going to be darkest. So, yeah. So, anyhow, it makes it it makes it nice. That's for sure. Having her, uh, we'll have to just tell her to turn on and off the art lights, and it'll turn on my different lights for recording or for just studio work. Yeah, I know. If we just get, you know, Amazon, we can do a, you know, a sponsor video. I know. I know. We should, all have, set. should get that. Yeah, maybe they'll call us. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Okay, this is dry now, so I'm going to grab, I've got these yellows on my brush. I'm just going to wipe off most of it and grab some more of that white. I do want it to be a little bit off-white, but I want it to be more on the white side than the yellow side. And I'm just going to use that right along the horizon line there. I got it a little bit dark. Just blend that up slightly into the sky. And it, if, if you're having trouble getting your colors to blend, you can try using some um, glazing liquid. I've got some a golden acrylic glazing liquid that I like to use. Well, that can help give you a little bit more blend time. It extends the dry time of the paint just a little bit. I'll grab a little bit of that on my brush. That'll help. Just blend that out. Yep. Lay down the heavy paint where I want it to be darkest, and then I'll come up above it and blend up with the dry brush, you know, once the paint is off my brush, mostly. And if you've got too much paint on your brush, you can just wipe it off and then go in and brush gently across to blend it up. But I think that looks a little bit better there. Might be a little too yellow, but I can go back in and glaze over it later. 
I'm going to put in some dark along this shoreline here. There's some phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And that nice dark color here. Good color. In my that's how it happens. It's I lay my hand on my palette. I need to turn that around so it doesn't doesn't tempt me to set my arm in it again. <laughs> and I'm just gonna tap. Actually, I think I'm gonna switch to a, a fan brush. It'll give me a little bit more choppy look that I'm going for here. A little bit of. A little tiny bit of water. We don't want too much water with this fan brush because it'll make it soggy. But there we go. I'm just going to tap along that shoreline. You can see that there's some dark areas along the shoreline. In my photograph, they're kind of brown, but I, I kind of wanted to go with a little bit of more of a blue. So. Okay, I'm going to grab some white, tap some white in there too, just a little bit of, with that, it's mixing with the color of my brush, so it's not pure white. I'm going to go right above where I put that dark color, and it'll just kind of be my sea foam sort of area, and then we'll use a little bit of this in the water too, we'll just kind of draw some waves in the water with this fan brush. Just going to gently drag it. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, so it's just kind of catching in you know, a few areas here. Your waves will be larger as you approach the shoreline, and then as you get back here, there'll be very, very small little um, Very small little waves and lines. You'll just see kind of like horizontal lines back in here. So I'm just going to kind of tap in just a few little details. The leader of the, the water. underground painting ring has joined us. Hey, Nathan. So he might want to stop and wait a little while before he. <laughs> so he can't get. He can't, so he can't copy. My secret, secrets. That's right. <laughs> pretty good. I'll grab a little bit of the yellow with the white mixture and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and white in a few little places here in the water. Okay, I think that looks fine. We're not going to put a huge amount of detail in the water there. Uh, Pretty good. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that yellow. Do a little bit of yellow streaks from the sand, like like you can see through in the water down there. Okay, good enough. Now, if I feel like I want a little bit of a brighter kind of a seafoam green though. So I'm going to do yellow green and white. Use that a little bit in here too. There we go. Not pressing down very hard, just kind of tapping. I'm liking that better now. Very good. How are you doing, hon? Good. Okay. What you looking at? Your microphone. What's it doing? Oh, nothing. You know, you're just a little bit softer than normal. Mm. You having to yeah. turn it up? You must be concentrating, talking in a lower voice. Okay. 
I'll talk a little louder. This, you know, I'm by the ocean. I'm kind of blissed out here. And so it's sort of in that zen frame of mind. I'm going to grab, I mixed up a little bit of dark brown with a raw sienna and a little tiny bit of black and some burnt sienna. I'm just going to kind of tap in some flex in the sea, the sand. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. so it'll come off my brush better. I'll talk a little bit louder. I am talking soft. I can tell. You're right. The meters don't lie over here. <laughs> it's kind of in a mellow mood tonight. If you get some of your spray up here, you can just kind of gently tap it off with a damp towel. Just make sure that your background's dry before you try to wipe anything off or it'll wipe your paint right off the canvas. We don't want that. Okay, so it's subtle, but there's just a few little flecks of color down in the sand that'll sort of just help with the whole vibe of the beach. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this dark burnt sienna blue mixture. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna than blue this time, and I'm gonna sort of lay in where my tree section is going. It's going to fill up this whole area here from all the way here all the way to the edge of the canvas. I'm just going to tap in kind of a horizontal flat uh, oval shape sort of. Kind of tapers out to a point a little bit. Right over here. Looks pretty good. I need you to move your thing over, honey, so I can see the picture. You're covering my picture. Oh, or I need to move the picture over or something. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, that's good. grab my chalk here and make sure my sky is dry. Actually, before I do, I'm going to put one more layer of blue on that sky. I'm still not happy with that color exactly. So I feel like I want a little bit more blue, so I'm just going to take some of that glazing liquid and a little bit of that light blue color, that phthalo blue and white. Maybe a little bit extra that they love blue in there. I'm just gonna glaze over. bit darker towards the top will always kind of help the illusion of depth too. So I always usually put my color a little bit stronger at the top and then fade it towards the horizon line. Just trying to keep a nice soft smooth look. Okay I think that looks pretty good. Sienna, a little bit of the yellow oxide. Grab some of that white color too. Just have a little bit of all those colors that I used in the sand and I'm just going to tap in some color along these grasses. And I've left a few spots of this light color in there so you might not have to do too much of this color but good. Let's grab a little bit of green. Mix that with what I got on my brush. 
put a little bit of that down here. And I'm just kind of setting my brush down and sort of flicking it upward. It'll give me the little kind of tufts of grass that I want. This area is real, real dark over here, so I'm not going to do too much to it over here. I'm going to do most of my lighter colors on this side. Right. Got a little bit more of the green, a little bit of burnt sienna this time. I'll make kind of an olive green color. We'll use a little bit of that. It's a little bit brighter. Okay, I think that's good. Make sure that the sky is dry before I mess with it. Still might be a little bit wet. Let's put a little bit of I'm gonna grab some black. I'm just gonna set in a little bit of black right here where this back side of the tree is where it's darkest. There's a shadow back here. And the tree is going to start right about the third line. So if you kind of split your canvas into thirds, um, your tree trunk is going to be right there on the third. That's where it's going to start right there. So if you want to kind of put a nice little dab of black right there to let you know where it's going to start, it's going to come right up from right there. So you're going to want a nice dark shadow kind of at the base of it so that it sort of disappears and blends into the grasses around it. Good. Wow, that was loud. All right, so this tree trunk is actually really fun. It kind of curves in. I'm going to use some chalk here and draw it out for you. And then it comes back out this way, back in, and then it's got a really long curve right here. So this is where my tree branches are going to start and I think I'm going to go ahead and put in the foliage first or at least part of it. I'm going to draw in part of the tree trunk and so I sort of know where to put the foliage. There's another kind of meandering branch that comes out here. This one splits right here. I can't really see this very well, sorry, but It'll make more sense once I start painting it. I'm just kind of trying to give myself a reference right now. So the foliage starts right just underneath or right on this horizon line here on this side. It comes out to about oh, the halfway mark on my canvas and then angles back up and then, and then back up over here. It's got a section that sticks out at the top kind of flattens out, comes back up and around. And then there's a big section right here. You may not want to draw on the canvas when, while it's still wet. It's kind of sticking to my canvas a little bit. And then this area is going to be nice and dark right through here. Okay, that's good enough. Got a pink color question. Yes. Can they use yellow ochre if they don't have a yellow wax side? Yes, yeah, yellow ochre will work just fine. Yep. Can they use yellow mustard? <laughs> no. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> no, silly. Okay, so for the dark area on the tree, I'm going to use the Thalo Blue, Burnt Sienna, and Black mixture. That was the first shadow color that I used down there. I might even grab a little bit of phthalo green. It's going to be really, really dark. Almost straight black. And we'll use this as our darkest foliage. I've got a Deerfoot stippler here. I'm just kind of loading up the tip of it with some paint. 
and I'm going to tap in very lightly where I want my darkest areas to go. And one of the things when you're doing trees like this is um, it's real easy to get kind of uh, impatient with the process. It takes a lot of, there's a lot of tapping involved, a lot of kind of patient development of the tree shape. Um, I'm not going to do the whole tree with this color. I'm just going to kind of concentrate on some of these darkest areas that I want to be really, really black and be the farthest away from us in shadow. And there we go. And you can get your tree to look solid real fast if you if you concentrate too much in one area and just pounce, 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 and then you can end up with these solid spots. So you just kind of want to constantly be moving your brush a little bit as you're doing this. As you're tapping, just kind of keep moving it back and forth a little bit. Um, this is just our first layer of color. This will be our darkest little areas. All right. Somebody's asked, could they use a sponge? Yep, you could use a sponge instead. You might, you know, need to um, either use a bigger canvas or, or uh, you know, really squeeze it so you have a very small area that you're working with because uh, it can take over pretty quickly. I'm going to set that one aside. I've got another, another stippler that I'm going to grab because I don't want to have to clean that out. So. Okay, and somebody's asked, um, what did they ask? Oh, can they alter their thalo green blue shade to yellow shade? Uh, yeah, if you add extra, a little bit extra yellow with it, it'd probably be closer. The, you know, the blue shade of, of thalo green is just going to be more blue, you know, so, um, I think adding a little bit more yellow will just mix with that blue part of it and make it more uh, closer to the shade I'm using. Okay, so I'm going to grab some yellow or uh, the green and a little bit of burnt sienna. It's going to make this kind of camo green color. This will be our next darkest. I'm going to just work from dark to light. So I'm going to just do layers of dark and continue working until I get it lighter. I need a little bit of yellow oxide in that. I feel like it's a little too dark. There we go. I'm gonna just go right above what I've just done. Let me tap in some of this color. So just don't do too much too soon, you know, leave enough room for other colors to go in, you know, so I'm still leaving little uh, open spaces in my tree for the sunlight to be poking through and also for some of my lighter shadows or lighter shades of green to happen here. Did you have a question, hon? Uh, yeah, they wanted to know what yellow I guess you're saying add yellow oh, to the paint. I would use like a cad yellow or something like that. Probably, you know, brighter yellow because okay. this color is pretty bright. And somebody wanted to know, other than a deer foot stippler, what other brush could you use for what you're doing? Um, You could use a fan brush. And I'm going to be using the fan brush here in a little bit when I do my lighter color. Um, I'll, use, I'll use it right now. Some of their, there's some areas in here that have burnt sienna. It's 
So I'm just going to use that straight. I see a lot of red in this tree, so I'm going to kind of go up here and add some of this burnt sienna in just a couple places. Very sparingly, though. I don't want it to overwhelm the tree. But this is such a red hue. Um, it's great to mix with your green because it, it's a good neutralizing um, color. Because green with red are opposite on the color wheel, so they will kind of neutralize each other, make each other duller um, when you mix them together. So that, but they also work really well against each other so that that little pop of red in there will really kind of make that green pop out at you a little bit more too. So uh, let's see, grab some raw sienna. Mix that with the thalo green and grab some unbleached titanium. And I still have that burnt sienna on my brush, so it's kind of an interesting olive green color. Now with the fan brush, I'm gonna kind of angle it a little bit. I don't sometimes I'll lay it straight down and tap, but um you can tend to get some weird, weird uh, looking leaf patterns if you do it too much of the straight across. So I'm going to use the edge of it sometimes too to kind of create some different shapes. Don't mind me, I'm just getting your color chart. I see that. I'm trying to answer questions. Okay. Pretend like I'm smart. I'm grab some yellow oxide here in my mixture. This is where I can start kind of developing this outside edge of my tree too, sort of tapping in and getting a regular shapes happening. Um, I was going to show you the other brush that I like to use for tree shapes and things like that are um, just an old scruffy brush that I have. This is a filbert and um, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow oxide and white and just a touch of that green. That'll be our highlight color. I actually can grab this color that with my yellow oxide white mixture. And this is going to be pretty bright, but I'll, I'll see it may, it may be, yeah, it'll be fine. I add a little bit more of the yellow oxide, get a little bit more on the yellow side. There we go. I'm just going to very lightly tap in with this brush and it's got such a scruffy kind of texture on it. It makes these really great patterns. So any kind of brush that you've got, if you've got a brush that's older and it's really beat up and it's got, you know, all kinds of fuzzy edges, those are some of the best ones to use for foliage and things like that. So I'm going to use a little bit more green and white with this color. There we go. Now with the white, you it can take over your tree real fast, so you really need to go very sparingly on these light areas. These are going to be the real highlight. You don't want them to dominate too much, so. I'm 
you can lose all of your um, depth in your tree if you add too much light too fast. That's pretty good. And I'm not really going to add hardly any down here. There's just a tiny bit on the top edges of some of these. But most of this is in shadow, so I'm going to leave all of that dark. Okay. Looks pretty good. I think. So let's put in the tree trunk now. Now that we've got our foliage down, we can put the tree trunk in because it's um, in the foreground. It's it's in front of the tree in my photograph. So I'm going to use black and some unbleached titanium and a little bit of burnt sienna. So I'm going to go over here to this burnt sienna area and just mix in those colors. Just kind of make kind of a deep brown color. And I've switched to a number two round. This will give me a little bit more control. Add a little bit of water to your paint when you're using a round brush will help it flow a little bit easier when you're doing lines. So this actually goes up like this and then it splits. And then it comes up over the top of this. Sorry, I'm kind of talking to myself while I'm talking, painting here, sorry. Like that. Nice thing about these trees is they're very, you know, they're real craggy. They've got all kinds of weird twisty shapes, so um, as long as you kind of follow the basic rules and make sure that you're your limbs are getting smaller as they go away from the tree trunk, you should be fine. You can do some really interesting shapes and things. And then as I get to these smaller branches, I might, I'm probably gonna switch to a, a liner brush. So I'm just gonna do kind of the basic basic medium size medium and large sized branches and then we'll switch to the smaller brush for the teeny ones and there's another branch that comes up here and kind of gets buried in all of that and this one keeps on going all the way up and twists around up into here Exaggerate the curve a little bit right there. Well, you're just painting and not saying anything. Uh -huh. I'd like to just say thanks to everybody who's joined us tonight watching live. Yes. We really appreciate it. If you're liking what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up. And if you've just found Angela's channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. And uh, see all the are you getting close to 200 videos yet? I don't know. I, th I know I have over 150. I'm not sure how many. 160 maybe? 170? Well, you need to get busy. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> no, we're really glad that you guys have joined us. And you subscribe to the channel. We can jump in and chat if you got questions that you'd like to ask. We'll uh, try to get them on air for you. 
get them answered. Yes, and if you want to um, get notified of, of uh, future videos, you can click the little bell that's next to the subscribe button. It'll send you an email alert whenever I have a new video or go live. So it's pretty handy. All right, I'm seeing. I want to do a little bit darker right up in here. So I'm grab some of that. Thalo blue and burnt sienna mix. Get some of that up in my tree. And I'm going to do some dark right in here. Some dark areas. Try not to cover over your light areas too much. So if you, if you do, you might have to go back in and touch up with a little bit of the lighter color. But think this looks good all right a fun tree these are really fun to paint if you say so <laughs> I, I say so I do I say that about every new painting though every new painting is my favorite <laughs> till the next one Okay, I'm going to grab some more of that black. Now I've switched to my liner brush and I'm going to put in a few. There's some like little limbs that kind of stick out and there's not a whole lot of the smaller branches that show in this tree, but uh, I just want to kind of make sure these all kind of go into something or make a little bit of sense. There's a small branch that kind of comes off here. And I've got other videos too that uh, talk in depth about, you know, branches and brush strokes and that kind of thing. So I've got a lot of tree videos. This one's. I think this one's a good, good starter tree. It's not too difficult. I've got, I've got several, really really easy tree videos though too. So, um, that black and white trees with the pop of color, those were. But those are more stylized. This one's definitely more of a realistic tree. So if you're kind of going for maybe trying a, a realistic tree, this one's a good one to, to try out maybe. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit maybe, hon. I feel like we're a little bit far away. I've been waiting for you to ask that all night oh, long. Okay, well, you could have done it at any point. Well, the top of the painting is kind of close to the top, so when I zoom in. Okay. Now I have to pay attention. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put some blue highlights down in the trunk of the tree. And use a little bit of that phthalo blue and some white. And I'll add a little bit of that dark tree trunk color to kind of gray it out a little bit. So but I'm, ooh, that's a pretty color. Okay, so there's all kinds of like little dabbled uh, light happening in this tree trunk. So I'm just going to kind of do some random brush strokes to create a little bit of texture in the bark. And grab a little bit of yellow and white. Use a little bit of that in. I'm kind of dry brushing. I've got just a little bit of paint on my brush here and I'm just barely touching it on the canvas to kind of catch the texture and draw in some bark. Barely, barely touching. Okay. 
have a little bit of the burnt sienna, raw sienna. Use a little bit of that in the tree as well. Grab some of that darker color and kind of touch over the top of some of these to set it back in and now that I have the lighter color in there I can kind of go back over it with this dark color and it'll set it back a little bit and I don't want to cover over it completely but it'll sort of help tone it down a little bit so it's not quite in your face so bright okay I'm liking that let's do really bright right here there's a little section right here I'm gonna grab some of that yellow there's a little section right here that's pretty darn bright so I'm just gonna tap in and make sure that that sort of pops out at us a little bit I'm not going all the way to the edge though because I don't want to lose the edge of my tree so I'm leaving a little bit of that dark on the outside all right I think that looks pretty good what do you think hun? we're getting there almost almost yeah. done yeah no oh, 30 minutes okay check <laughs> no um, no, people are commenting how you know, it was amazing that you know you had some colors. I, mean, I wouldn't think of putting blue on mm -hmm. the tree because trees mm -hmm. just aren't blue, right? And you know those highlights help bring dimension and yeah and reality to the tree. Yeah, that shadow having that blue in there really helps. Add a little bit more of that actually. Plus, it kind of ties in the rest of the background color. You know, makes the tree sort of. Um, feel like part of the whole. All right, I think that's pretty good. We'll add a little bit of grasses down here with my wall brush. There's actually some sort of dark green. Grab some of that dark green color. There's some leaves coming off the edge of the tree here, like some little branches, kind of have some leafing happening right down here. And I'll use this brush with my yellow, green, and burnt sienna mixture. And I'm just going to tap in a few little random brush strokes along the edge, and that'll kind of help that outline of the tree, the silhouette of the tree give it a little bit more realism. You don't have to do the whole tree with these little teeny tiny brush strokes, but having just a few of them will really kind of help uh, make your tree look a little bit more realistic. Make sure they're similar to the color around it. You don't want to set a color out there that's not close to the close to the other colors that you've already used. So you kind of want to make sure that that makes sense. And then if you've got any areas where your branch looks like it's kind of setting out and it's not attached to anything, you can tap a little bit of this color over the top of a few of these branches and sort of set them back so they look like they're part of the tree too. It's a good way to just kind of help it, help it out. You were off camera. Was I? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> okay. How, the whole time? Just the top part. Oh, nice. Yeah, people in chat were nice enough to Thank you. point it out to me. Good. We got to start over. <laughs> yeah, you're fired. So pretend like you're painting the top of the tree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is so realistic. All right, I'm gonna grab this tree trunk color and I'm gonna put a little bit of this shadow color down here in the grasses just for some 
continuity. There's some of this color down in here. And this side. And I think we're about done, huh? What do you think? I feel like I want a brighter green in here. I don't have the have a yellow that'll give me that, but I want to put maybe just a little bit. I'm gonna throw out some hands of yellow. This is a just something I'm seeing today. Oh, I didn't use any of my quinacridone magenta either. Hmm, that's okay. I don't think I need it. But I'm gonna use a little bit of that hands of yellow with my green and I'm going to make a bright brighter green color here I use just a little bit of it in my tree I noticed that there was got my fan brush just a little bit brighter pop of color wake up the other colors that are around it a little bit. There we go. So a reminder to everybody that the links to your Facebook group, Thankful Art, are down below in the description. Yes. So if they do the paintings, they can post it on there, become a member. Mm -hmm. There's like 7,400 people on there right now. It's a closed group. Yeah, it's a closed group, so you can, you know, whatever you share doesn't get shared publicly on the internet, so you can, you know, share, uh, get advice, you know, if you've got uh, questions about painting, uh, that, you know, one of my paintings that you're trying and you're stuck or, or something, there's... Uh, rule number one is to be kind so it's a no judgment you know be kind to yourself be kind to others um, the critiques are always done in a very positive manner you know uh, it's really important to me to make sure that people who are trying to learn to paint are in an encouraging environment so that they don't uh, there's a lot of negative feedback out there that you can get from people, especially when you're a beginner. So I uh, wanted a safe place where you can learn and help each other, encourage each other to kind of grow in your art journey and not uh, be feared that people are going to, you know, tell you art stinks or something like that, which there's a lot of that out there. There's plenty of plenty of opinions about art, that's for sure. <laughs> And it can be a little scary when you're first starting out to share and, you know, uh, put yourself out there. So this is just a way to do that that's a little bit uh, friendlier. Okay, there we go. Now I'm happier. I don't know if you're happier, but I am. I just added a little bit more dark and a little bit more light. And I'm about to clap my hands over really here. You're really happy about it? I know. Yeah. I know. I'm, I was happy. I want to put some of that brighter yellow down here in the sand too. So we'll just do a little bit more and then we'll be done. And Mark, Mark is kept watching the clock to see if I'm going to do my 30 minutes because I said I was almost done. But I think I've only had 10 minutes since then, so I still have time to get to get off here. You got plenty of time to keep messing with it. it <laughs> Them too well. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of that hands of yellow. Really, you could use any bright yellow, uh, cadmium yellow, medium would be would work too. I'm adding a little bit of white to it to tone it down, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of that in the sand over here to brighten up that sand. You have to whisper too when you do it. Yes, am I whispering? I'm <laughs> whispering a lot today. You get really quiet when you're you were talking. 
you know, real well. And then he started painting and he kind of like really I whispering. Know. It's hard. <laughs> I get in that hey, zone. Try, get... uh, I've tried painting a couple things and it's, it is very difficult to try to talk and to do that too. Yeah, so. it is. You make it's it look easy. I just, I just get kind of bliss. I don't know. I get in that Zen zone that kind of do some light, lighter color right along there. Get very relaxed. Okay, I'm happy with that. What do you think? Are you happy? I'm happy. <laughs> Mark's just like, I want dinner. I don't care. It's no, good. just like the song says, if you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. <laughs> I see what you did You're there. welcome for the earworm. I see what you did there. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm using my lap and my damp cloth. I'm just gently going to wipe off my chalk lines here. Oh, gosh. What do I need? I don't know. I hey. asked for it. That's all I have to say. Hey, you, I asked you to do this with me, so you give, I can't complain. You get what you pay for. That's, That's right. all I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to grab some unbleached titanium here. I'm going to add a little bit of it in this grass here. And along this outside edge here, I'm going to grab some of that raw sienna. And just kind of tap in a little bit of that. It feels like it was kind of an abrupt change there. Tap a little bit of it in the sand. And I think we're going to stop fussing with this right now. I think we're good. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I, you know, I, I enjoy doing these kind of things. The longer you do it, the more you can kind of see things you want to put in there, change and things. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to stop. There's Stick Man. He's our mascot. I'm gonna put it in. I guess we'll give him a tree, huh? Let's do it. Whoops. Oh, I got black on Stick Cat. <laughs> Poor Stick Cat. So we'll try to get the tree behind him. I don't know. Whoops. I may have to just go over. Go Well, here, I'll do like that. There we go. So Stick Cat's got a cypress tree growing behind him. It's awfully large compared to the size of that building that we did. So it's a pretty massive tree. The building is way back in the distance. Okay, well, yeah, we'll put the... Come on, you need a no perspective. <laughs> That's true. You're supposed to be Jeez. a pro at this. I mean, okay, look at the size of that cat to the tree, though. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> and Stick Man himself. It's a baby tree. And the sheep, too. It's pretty big. All right, we're he's getting filled filled up, so we'll have to pick a new stick man. He'll have to draw me a new stick man soon. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, out. He got a rooster friend on Saturday, so and this Saturday we're going to be doing some sort of summer themed. We'll probably do another ocean type uh, painting, similar to well, not similar to this one, but you know, in that same general genre I feel like I need okay I'm gonna do one more thing on this I swear I promise I'm done after this it's just too the acrylics dry darker so sometimes you need to let them dry completely before you can actually see and a lot of times I'll do two or three layers of my highlights um, once they've dried a little bit so I need a little bit more of that light green yellow color I'm just going to go really bright with it, almost white. So mixed in some yellow. It's picking up a little bit of that hands of yellow. It's got a little teeny tiny bit of green in it. I'm just going to use it to put in some really bright highlights. Just on a few parts of this tree here. Okay. 
All right, I promise I'm done now. It looks more like sunlight now to me. Put a few little dabs of that in the grass too. Okay. And sign it. What? And sign it. Mm, yes, thank you. Well, somebody in chat reminded me, so I reminded you. Thank you. Thank you, somebody in chat, whoever you are. Okay, I've got my Pigma. This is just a permanent ink pen. So any permanent ink, not Sharpie, but you want like a permanent light fast pen. I like the pit pens. I've got a link down in the description to the Faber-Castell pit line. This one's a Pigma Sakura FB. Um, they're both uh, permanent ink light fast pens. So you can sign your paintings with them and then you can varnish over them. They won't fade. They won't fade or um, wash off when you varnish with them. So um, one more thing. I, I signed it and then I'm going to add one more thing. Sorry. I just <laughs> noticed. Okay, that's what? just funny because somebody said then she signs it and then she goes back and does something <laughs> again. <laughs> Stop. Okay, y'all. I just noticed there's a branch over here that I, it needed. Okay, I promise. Okay, we'll do one more right there. Done. All right, stop. We're stopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. You're picking on me tonight. We're just saying that we know you. Okay. Well, good. That's all. Good. We love you. <laughs> oh, <that's> sweet. <laughs> we did it almost an hour. It's not too bad. Yeah. Chad, uh, Chad is really loving the painting. I, I love know. this one. Yeah, this picture was and really they pretty. say that you're the best at trees. Oh. And so I commented, challenge accepted. <laughs> oh, Mark's so they're going to have to tune into Facebook group to see. Nice. What a real tree looks like. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I want to see that. I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. We've already said that, but uh, we appreciate you guys. And thank you to those who are supporting us on Patreon. It means a lot. There's links to that. Uh, I'll have a traceable on my Patreon page if you want to join us there and uh, donate a dollar a month. You get a, all the traceables since February for a dollar a month. So all the new ones and all the old ones. So uh, we will see you next time. Bye.